What it takes to be a leader in a reset world. What the world really needs right now is you. And for you to step into your leadership and to bring that forth through your business and your relationships and how you see and view yourself and run your energy. Hi, my name is Deborah Peters and welcome back. I really appreciate you taking the time to tune into this video today. And if you like the content, please hit the subscribe button and then also that little bell next to the subscribe button so that as I upload new content, you'll be the first one to know. So before I begin this conversation with you, I think I owe everyone an apology that follows my channel because I've been a little bit MIA and I just wanna take ownership of that and, and explain a little bit as to why that is. So it's not that I haven't had creative content to share with you. In fact, my mind is going pretty much 24 seven. You know, I wake up in the middle of the night and I write things down. I have so much happening within me, yet I wasn't really ready to sit in front of the camera and, and shoot content. Don't know why, just wasn't feeling it. I mean, I've been doing webinars, I've been doing other stuff, but this really wasn't talking to me. And maybe it was because I needed to formulate some more of those uh, creative ideas into thought forms that I could express here. So I have something for you today and it is how to be a leader in a reset world. Now, if you look back at some of my previous videos, you'll see that I did talk about re hitting the reset button. And part of that conversation was, you know, you can hit the reset button any time. You don't have to wait for Monday. You don't have to wait for the, for the beginning of the month. You don't have to wait for tomorrow. You can, in fact, you could stop what you're doing right now and you could totally reset and come back into your next task or thing that you wanna accomplish and be in a completely different energy. So I broke this down into five pretty succinct um, concepts that I'm gonna roll out for you today. And then we can circle back around and we can unpack some of those in more detail, perhaps in more videos. But let's start with this top five. It's kind of, it's kind of just, you know, hitting the surface, but it's a beginning. So the first thing is to raise your conscious awareness. What is that? What is conscious awareness? So first of all, I'm going to just break that down and succinctly put it as consciousness. So raising your consciousness is really about becoming more self-aware. The more self-aware you can become, the more conscious you are. You know, when you think of the word conscious, you know, we have a conscious mind and we have an, uh, an unconscious mind. Now, some people call it subconscious. Personally, I don't think it's sub anything. I think the unconscious is infinite. It's, it's vast, it's unmeasurable. So the reason I call it unconscious is it's typically the part of our mind that we aren't necessarily aware of. And so that's where our blind spots are. That is where maybe our limiting beliefs are held that we're not aware of. It might be where we store negative emotions like fear and doubt and resentment. So the more you can become aware of what's going on with you and what makes you tick, how you run your energy, the self-talk that you're experiencing, then the more conscious awareness you have. The more conscious awareness you have, the more power to choose who you want to be. So I was out today hiking with a friend and you know, I grew up on a farm. You've heard me talk about this and I have this like really deep relationship with mother nature. And, you know, I, I notice the subtleties. I pay attention to the subtleties. And, 
and you know the shift in the color of the earth and, or, or a particular flower and how it grows or a plant and the energy that the plant gives off etc etc and so this friend of mine I've been taking hiking for weeks and every time we go I point things out that I noticed that she hadn't noticed before and today she was sharing with me that as a result of those experiences like a particular bird chirping in a, in, a, in a particular way or maybe when we're having a conversation and then all the birds start singing and paying attention to those little subtleties. And she said, because of these experiences, now when she drives to run errands or go to work, she's actually more aware of her environment and has a deeper appreciation for Maybe it's the clouds in the sky or just how blue the sky is that day or the particular uh, facade on a building. And so this is conscious awareness is probably the best way to describe it. The more you can tune in, you know, be in present time and pay attention to who you're being. How are you relating to yourself? What are some of the things you're saying to yourself? Are you being hard on yourself in your self-talk? Or are you being kind and gentle and creative? Are you dreaming about what it is that you're building and what you're developing and where you're taking your future? This is conscious awareness, especially when you know that you don't like the way you feel and as a result of not liking the way you feel, you notice that that feeling came from a self-talk, like a conversation that you have in your head, and then you actually choose to say different things to yourself, and as a result of that, you notice your emotions get better, and then you notice your body feeling better. And when you do that enough times with enough repetition over days, weeks, months, years, you see your life transform. So that's conscious awareness. So the more conscious you can become, the more of your leadership capacity you could bring forth in your daily life, in your relationships, at your job, in your business, with your clients, even with your body, your health. All right, so this is a pivot right there. That's a turning point. All right, so then the second thing is mastering your emotions. Now, I really believe that you can't really get a handle on your emotions until you can actually become aware of them, right? And also taking it to another level, not just become aware of your emotions, but to become aware of the thoughts that cause those emotions or how you spend your time. You know, are you listening to negative news? Are you hanging out on social media, watching other people talk about how accomplished they are and then feeling inadequate? You know, these kinds of things that you do, like maybe watching violent movies, maybe fighting with your spouse um, or your kids, you know, or your boss or your, or your team actually create this whole negative emotional pattern that brings down your energy. So getting aware of that, cleaning that up, taking a look at your relationships and really taking stock. All right, number three is then choosing your self-talk. And again, you, you have to be self-aware to even know what that self-talk is. I don't think really most people do. I think most people are, well, I think there's more people that are paying attention to that. But I think most people don't. I mean, I'll be out walking and I'll hear people talking and they'll be, criticizing themselves you know they'll be in a conversation with someone else and they'll go you know i was such an idiot and i did this thing or i was so stupid i couldn't remember xyz one time i was in the gym and this lady forgot something when she was digging in her gym bag and she's like oh my god i'm such an idiot and i'm like don't say that to yourself so 
becoming aware of your self-talk is really, really important. And then creating positive, loving self-talk like, I am happy, I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am doing better and better every day, I am becoming more and more inspired, I am taking really good care of myself, I am sleeping better, I'm eating better, I'm, I'm hanging out with happy, healthy, vibrant people. You notice that everything I just said, every sentence started with I am. So dialing in that self-talk and repatterning yourself through repetition. All right, next is your body. Yeah, so your body, this is so important. How you care for your body determines so much about how you live your life. And so let's look at it from both perspectives. Let's say, first of all, let's say you're not really in touch with your body. And so it takes a long time for you to notice an ache or a pain. And then maybe when you notice that ache or pain, you, you, you dash off to the doctor and you get a medication, you get um, like a pharmaceutical. So you never really self-discover what's going on with your body. You know, you're, you're kind of like, okay, it's this, it's this foreign thing that I pack around all the time and um, it's not performing the way I want. So therefore I need this outside external um, advice from a professional to tell me what's wrong with me when perhaps you could just do some lifestyle modifications and then I feel like I'm going to sneeze um, and then you'd be in good shape, right? But I'm fighting it. <laughs> um, but let's say instead you were actually to start paying attention to how you think, then how you feel, and then how your body feels, or maybe how you think, how you feel, and then how your energy is, like the thoughts you think, the emotions you run, does that make you feel tired, or does that make you feel happy and energetic and you can't wait to go do something? You know, just starting to connect the dots like that, it makes a huge difference. Now, in terms of perception, so we perceive life based on who we're being and perception equals reality. Now, if you have a unhealthy body, if you have an overweight body, if you have a diseased body, if you have a body that you aren't in touch with and you don't even you don't even know what's going on inside of you because you're so not connected to your body. It's kind of this foreign thing. Then you're perceiving life, you're perceiving reality through that sluggish, slow moving, pain riddled body. You, you filter life through the way you feel you know, on a physical level. So getting fit, you've heard me talk about this before, and get fit, just get fit. Get fit and get healthy. Now, if you're overweight, and I've been overweight, so there's no judgment, I've mastered it because I learned to pay attention to my body. And instead of just consuming foods and beverages out of habit, I started paying attention to not just how my body feels when I eat or consume something, but how my mind runs. And I noticed that if I drink alcohol, the next day I'm bloated for one thing. I don't feel like doing anything for another. And thirdly, I have really negative self-talk. So there's something about it that my body just can't really deal with. So on a personal level, it's been almost a year. 
I've cut out alcohol. Now I'm not suggesting you have to do that, but you might want to dial it back so that your body, your liver can catch up and your liver can actually process it. The less you put into your body, the less fatty liver you have and the more your liver can process it, the easier it is to flush it through your body, right? So on the flip side, when you create a healthy body through, through foods, beverages, sunlight, exercise, breathing, you know, breathing can do wonders for stress and metabolism and healing. And so then you perceive life in a different way. So when you're lean, you're nimble and you can move quicker and you feel really good physically, then that filters how you perceive life. You perceive life in a completely different way. So it's not about judgment, because again, you know, I struggled all of my life with my weight. I was up and down like a yo-yo. I had a closet of skinny clothes, medium clothes, and my fat clothes. And I just, you know, it was really, it was really a struggle for me. So even though I owned a fitness club, I still dealt with that. And I tried to compensate with a lot of uh, vigorous exercise. And it really just came down to getting in tune with my body and understanding that the diet that I was taught when I grew up and the food pattern that I was indoctrinated with, you know, the three meals a day, the two snacks, all that jazz, um, didn't work for me. Now it works for some people, but it didn't work for me. And I had to change. I had to be willing to let go of that way of being in order for my body to catch up health wise instead of taxing it and burdening it with foods and beverages and amounts of food and frequency of food that I just couldn't break down. I just couldn't. So then the last number five is so huge is and that is everyone is a leader. You don't have to have this title on your door or this title on your LinkedIn profile or or your business card to be a leader. You can you could be doing anything in life, any job, any business. You could be in any position in life. Socially, doesn't matter. All of these constructs are disintegrating and the Newtonian physics model of the world that you have to see it to believe it, that you have to struggle to be worthy, that, that there are people that are above you, that are more important than you, that are the anointed ones that are more special than you, that have more knowledge than you because of their title or their, or their salary or their zip code, that is dissolving, that is disappearing. And guess what? You are a leader and it's time for you to take ownership of that and follow these first four steps that I gave you and just make little adjustments, a little bit at a time until you get your stride, you know, and you'll get into this place of, of, yeah, I've got this. I feel good about me. I feel good about, I'm mastering my emotions and I'm tuned into my self-talk and I'm taking care of my body and my mind and my thoughts. And when you get to that place, oh, you are formidable. <laughs> You are unstoppable. So start with this and then let's have a conversation around your money and let's have a conversation around the people that you surround yourself with 
and the activities that you engage in, there's so much we can do together. And I really appreciate you being here today. I want to cut this off because we're hitting the 20 minute mark. I love you and I look forward to sharing more with you. And please subscribe, hit the bell, and let's do this together. Let's really make a difference in our own lives and let's be that shining example to the greatest ability that we can for everyone around us to be able to shine just as brightly as the next person. Have a blessed day. Ciao.